to know about the Association of Indian Management Schools? It's a 34-year-old networking body of B schools in India, having a membership of about 600 top management institutions. AIMS focuses on professionalization of management education, protects interests of B schools, represents management institutions at national and international forums, financially supports members in academic events, funds research projects on management, disseminates management related knowledge through its annual management education convention, conferences, seminars, round tables and workshops. Organizes free weekly webinars on knowledge sharing and inspiring young leaders sessions for management faculty and students. Supports B schools in admissions through Atma, AIMS test for management admissions. Visit https atmaaims.com for more details. Publishes a biennial AIMS Journal of Management. Visit https aimsjournal.com for more details. Circulates a quarterly e-newsletter on AIMS activities. Conducts workshops on case writing. Encourages AIMS members to be part of decision-making processes as members of chapter management committees and the executive board. Encourages students' participation in free weekly quiz competitions by providing support to interested institutions. Facilitates networking and interaction among B schools. Why would you like to remain a non-member of AIMS? Pay a very low one-time membership fee and enjoy many lifetime benefits. Visit httpsaims.org.in for more details. Varsh now, harsh now, jeevan utkarsh now. Quoting these inspiring words from renowned poet Harivansh Rai Bachanji, I wish New Year brings you all new joy and greater heights of success and fulfillment in life. As we step into 2024, the business world continues to witness evolution and revolution, presenting exciting opportunities as well as challenges for those aspiring to build a successful career. Whether you are a recent business graduate, or seeking career change, or a faculty mentor guiding students in your day-to-day -day working life, the next one hour will serve as a beacon to navigate through the information and skills needed to excel in finance and business careers. A very good afternoon to all of you. I am Sheelam Jain, Associate Professor in the area of Organizational Behavior and Human Resource Management at Vignan Jyoti Institute of Management, Hyderabad, and also a career mentor for last 20 years with a passion to nurture younger generations for professional and career success. It is my absolute pleasure and privilege to welcome you all on behalf of Association of Indian Management Schools to yet another session of the Inspiring Young Leader series a flagship initiative of AIMS that brings industry, entrepreneurs, academia, and students together on a common platform to share and gain valuable insights. My sincere gratitude to AIMS for the opportunity to moderate this session on building a successful and sustainable career in finance and business. I'm pleased to introduce our esteemed resource person, Mr. Shrikant Nemagada, who has actually built a meaningful and rewarding career for himself. And he is here with us today to guide on how to craft a successful profession. Mr. Shrikant is an experienced corporate leader with expertise in general management, finance, and accounting. He has over 17 years of corporate experience in New York and India. Presently, he is the founder and CEO of Alpha XN, providing financial and accounting services to private equity and real estate funds. Earlier, 
He was the managing director of a pharma manufacturing company. He also worked with BlackRock, Berkeley's Capital, and Deloitte in New York, and with PwC in India. He's a proud chartered accountant, a graduate of master's in professional accounting from the University of Texas at Austin, and also a graduate of the MBA program in Columbia University. Notably, he is also a recipient of Presidential Volunteer Award, which he received from US President Obama. Commendably an illustrious career journey, Mr. Shrikan, and I'm confident that we all are going to be benefited from your knowledge and experience. I welcome our esteemed guest, Mr. Shrikant Nimagadda. A hearty welcome to AIMS dignitaries and dear participants to this one hour session on building a successful and sustainable career in business and finance under the inspiring young leader series by AIMS. Now, dear friends, before we commence, let us set some ground rules. Participants cannot unmute themselves during the session. However, they may use Zoom chat box for questions which will be answered during the end in the Q&A session. Most importantly, please be noted that a feedback and attendance link will be shared on the Zoom chat box and it is available only for 15 minutes. Certificates will be issued to only those who submit the feedback form. I repeat, the feedback link will be activated only for 15 minutes during the end of the session, and certificates will be issued to only those who submit the feedback form. Kindly follow these instructions for smooth conduct of this session. Let us now embark on an insightful journey driven by Mr. Shrikant Nimagada to build not just a successful, but a sustainable career. Over to you, Shrikant. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, uh, happy New Year. Happy, healthy, and uh, memorable New Year uh, 2024 to all of you. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure uh, to be here, and I thank uh, Dr. Shilam Ji and uh, AIMS organization uh, for offering this uh, opportunity uh, to be part of um, your journey uh, of, uh, of this inspiring Young Leaders series. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm successful or not. Um, we are all uh, in, in a journey of life where uh, we are figuring out um, you know, as, we, as we go forward. Um, however, in this journey of uh, almost uh, 22 years now, um, after my 12th, um, you know, there are a few things that I picked up by observing others or, you know, from others' guidance um, that could possibly have some help to, you know, some of you. The idea of the conversation now is not to give a lecture or not to boast <coughs> uh, any of my experiences, um, but the idea is simply to share, um, you, know, uh, you know, parts of my life and parts of my learnings with all of you. And I really believe that uh, one can learn um, from everyone we come across in our lives. Um, we could pick up something that we like, or we could pick up something that we don't like. And, and, and maybe we avoid that um, for, our, uh, for our future. Um, with that said, uh, ma'am, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Sure. Okay. If you don't mind going to the second slide. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess that, um, you know, most of the uh, professionals here are either, um, um, you know, members of the faculty guiding um, young uh, students who are in students or graduates who are interested in finance and business, um, or there are students themselves uh, who, who have graduated now with a finance or a business degree. Um, generally speaking, I'm overgeneralizing here, when we talk about finance and business, um, what comes top of, our, uh, top of our mind is, you know, money, um, success, wealth, 
um, corporate, you know, high-end corporate careers. And in some extreme examples, many folks uh, dream of uh, working in Wall Street, um, which is gen- traditionally held to be the, you know, the ultimate uh, Makkah of, uh, of finance careers. Or even in, in the India context, it could be working in Dalal Street or, you know, Bombay financial industry. Um, so, you know, there, there are obviously uh, great benefits of such aspirations and, you know, uh, of building very successful, very demanding and very, um, you know, um, monetarily uh, valuable careers. Um, but it's, uh, I always um, say that it, it also comes with an impact. Now, um, what that impact is would depend on your own individual personality, likes and dislikes. Uh, while we all focus on the success part of it, um, I would like to just um, start off with a caution. Um, you know, if somebody is aspiring to build a career in Wall Street or, or the Lal Street or high-end finance, um, which is in the next slide, if you don't mind going there, ma'am. So there is stress, there is huge monetary losses that are possible. Um, there is extreme level of competition, which leads to, you know, possibilities of fire, getting fired from jobs. Um, from my personal um, experience point of view, um, I had completed my chartered accountant uh, program in 2002 uh, in Madras, and then I eventually immediately went to the U.S. 2003, September is when I started working in New York. I worked most of my corporate career was built in New York City in, in Wall Street category of jobs. Um, I can give you, you know, examples. Uh, you know, I personally chose to put myself in the most strenuous opportunities that I could possibly come across. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, between 2003 to 2007, um, I was pretty much working about 18, 20 hours a day, six days a week. So getting holiday on a Sunday was a bonus um, for a few years in a row. In one particular um, deal, which was a very big um, Wall Street deal, um, I had not gone home for three days. Um, you know, I'm just giving you a very extreme example because um, these are extreme uh, cases and, you know, I chose to put myself there. Um, in, during those three days, the next morning when my uh, senior manager came to the table, he was shocked to see I didn't go home. And by afternoon, he put, you know, some $150 on my table and said, go to the ground floor, buy yourself some clothes, go to the gym, office gym, take a shower and come back. But the third morning when he came back, the dollars were still on the table and I had not moved except for going to the restrooms and eating while, eat, uh, you know, while working. So those, you know, and um, the fourth day, the client team, it was a bank team and I, my team, we ended up in a common location. Um, there we found during that whole deal closing process, a guy simply collapsed on the table. He was standing and exchanging some papers with us, discussing things, he just collapsed. So the reason I bring that up is to, you know, throw a caution saying that whenever we think of, you know, great careers, um, it comes with a cost. Now, how it, the cost is not just, you know, monetary cost, but also health cost, right? How we think about it, how we caution ourselves, how do we prepare for it is what um, is, is, the, is, is the point that I want to draw your attention to. And that starts from now, from the beginning of your career. And these are extreme examples, so it may look very dramatic, but um, these are real life scenarios. And to various degrees, this would be applicable to you know different number of jobs. Uh, if you don't mind going to the next one, ma'am. So um, with, with that serious uh, tone that I just shared, maybe it's you know to lighten the mood, um, we'll watch a small clip of, of, you know, uh, how a career can be visualized or thought about. If you don't mind clicking on that link, ma'am. Yeah. 
Right. Me an engineer, I thought I would cover that in my in my. Uh, my I can hear the audience. First of all, we love that Venn diagrams. I just proved it. I, I love Venn diagrams, and I figured out. People always ask me, "How did you go from engineer to comedian?" And Venn diagram is the um, best way to explain how I went from engineer to comedian. <laughs> it is because here's what happened. I'm in the high school, right? I'm good at two things. I'm good at I have math skills, and I'm good at problem solving. And when you're good at those two things, no guidance counselor says you should be a comedian. <laughs> that doesn't happen. They said you should be an engineer, so I went and became an engineer. If you got people skills and you're good at problem solving, you probably go into management, right? You're good with people. You should go into now over here. If you got OCD, everything has to be exactly right, and you have math skills, uh, you're an accountant, is what you are. Right? You can't solve any problems, but you can identify them. Right? That's what accountants do. That's that's what they do. Every accountant I marry, go, oh, you got to fix this. You are screwed. Don't, they don't solve any problems. Over here, if you're into drinking and you have people skills, well, join our sales force. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Look at you guys. Apparently VP and uh, executive vice president of the sales. Over here, if you're uh, heartless and you got OCD, uh, you're in human resources. What? What, we have human resources people here? Calm down. And if you're heartless and into drinking, uh, you're a lawyer. That's how that works. And if you're all of these things, then you are a comedian. That's how that works. You can stop the thing. Yeah. Venn diagram. So while she's doing that, um, you know, I thought uh, that uh, that particular uh, video clip um, captured as to how um, people stereotype, um, you know, uh, various careers and um, how people get stuck with those stereotypes. Um, and uh, that typically happens across the world. Uh, it's not just India. You know, I spent more, uh, 10 years uh, living and working in, in the U.S. and then last 12 years traveling there quite often. Uh, it's, it's true across the world, across different cultures. Um, so... So you know now that that's that that basically leads us to you know to the question as to you know what is career and 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 what do how do we think about a career? So going back to the fundamentals of it, you know the the, the dictionary meaning of career it, it's a chosen pursuit, a profession or an occupation. It's a general course of progression of one's working life or one's professional achievements. You know, it could be a sports career, it could be, you know, a med medical career, it could be finance career, it could be a business career. Um, and um, there is, you know, enough, there are enough examples out there um, that shows that, you know, um, a combination of skills, um, only if you have uh, some skills, you can become a particular professional. Um, you know, there are examples where people have acquired skills and then, built specific careers, even if um, they didn't uh, plan to get into that career. Um, many, there are many examples where sports people have become great business people. Um, and in the same way, there are many sports people who have uh, utterly failed um, to safeguard their money that they earn from successful sports career, and they have become bankrupt um, big examples of that are, you know, Maradona, Boris Becker in tennis. Um, they became bankrupt, they've gone to jail and whatnot. Why I give those examples is, um, you know, these are extreme examples, but short of the extremes um, in the normal course of life, um, we, we also fail in various degrees to, to plan our careers, to, to manage our careers. Even if you know, at an early stage of life, we plan to become something, to choose a certain career. Later on, once we enter those careers, we don't necessarily manage our careers very well. Uh, what I mean by management is, managing our careers is not just, you know, am I successful in the job that I'm doing? Am I getting the highest increment or not? Am I getting the promotion or not? Promotion or not? That's not managing career. That is uh, doing the job and, you know, trying to uh, improve your performance in the job. But managing career is thinking from time to time, you know, whether it's once in three years, once in five years, am I heading in the right direction? Am I in the right career or not? Is this giving me the satisfaction from many different, uh, you know, 
uh, in multiple factors, whether satisfaction just in terms of earning money, in in the organization that I'm working, in the type of role that I'm getting, the opportunities that I'm getting, is it fulfilling um, your basic values that you have as a human? Um, so those kind of career checks are very very important in you know um, to to think about um, once every few years. Sometimes life forces such analysis onto you, but um, you know sometimes, for example, if a company goes bankrupt where you're working, now you're forced to think about you know what do you do next, or you know, or sometimes um, somebody um, does not end up somebody ends up in a job or an organization which they hate, and they're then forced to look for alternatives. Um, sometimes you get stuck with a bad boss, and to the extent where the, the boss makes you feel that you know you don't belong to that career that you really, really, really have desired to build, uh, you know, a successful life in. Um, there are many examples of, of such cases. Um, you know, um, so it's very important as to how you manage your career despite what you um, what you come across. Um, I'll uh, give one example. Um, of an American who, when I was relocating after 10 years in the U.S. to India, um, the, you know, this is not to um, comment on how things are done in India. This is just how an American looks at it. Um, that's why I'm mentioning it. Um, so when I, after 10 years of successful career on Wall Street, when I was relocating to India, um, the American had a business in China and in India. So he was well aware of everything. He said, Shrikan, don't go back to India just because it's your country. Um, that was his view, right? Um, I had my own reasons to come back to India. He said, um, don't go to India because it's your country. Don't go to India because India is going to be the, is the promising country for next 20 years. This is back in 2011. Um, he said, go to India despite everything India has to offer. Um, what it means is, he had some bad experiences in India. He had tough experiences because he was an American entrepreneur in India. Um, so he said, India has a lot of promise, but there are a lot of difficulties that you face, a lot of uncertainties that you face. Go back to India only if you're, despite those factors, if you feel that you can survive those factors, right? That's how he looked at it. What I got from that message is what is relevant here. He's saying that whenever you want to do something, there are always going to be, you know, pros and cons, pluses and minus, you know, happy things, not so happy things, right? The question that you have to ask yourself is, despite some of the negative things, possibly negative things, is that course or is that career still something that is compelling for you, still something that is attractive for you, right? Um, that is the question um, that really resonated uh, with me. And I asked that question time and again to myself, if, you know, despite the money that a particular opportunity promises to give me, is this something that I'm happy doing? Right? Um, is this going to uh, give me the satisfaction? Is this going to give me the challenge and the adventure that I'm seeking? Um, so th that's one way to think about your career and crafting your career. So when we're thinking about career and you know uh, the various things, one of the most important part of that is a skill. What allows you to build a career? You know, the, if we go to the dictionary meaning of skill in the next slide, <clears throat> it's essentially a proficiency, a talent, an ability that that you have or you acquire uh, o over a period of time um, that allows you to offer something of value to others um, in return, generally in return for, for uh, money or in, in case of voluntary organizations or you know, in case of voluntary work, it, it may be a skill that you know, you're offering uh, for no payment. But generally for careers, we think about it as a, a talent and ability that you develop, which is useful for others and which others are willing to pay you for. Um, and <clears throat> Typically, when we talk about skills, one gets stuck in the technical as technical skills aspect. Um, 
and which is you know over the last 10 15 years uh, i started my career in 1998 in in with pwc in india um even then the concept of um, you know soft skills um the concept of you know other skills were not so prominent um but now it's gratifying to see that uh, people are talking about soft skills people are focusing on 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 soft skills besides the technical skills and coming to finance it's people it, you know they they realize that you know there is a lot of finance skills there is technicalities that you have to learn but when it comes to business say mba program people think oh business is there are no technical skills not much technical skills in managing in you know running a business or all that you know you're bossing around what not you're using other people's skills um, which is not true as mba students many of you will uh, will understand you know relate to what i'm saying uh, many engineers feel that mbas uh, you know they go to do mba program for time pass or for having fun it's really not a skill that you develop i personally beg to differ it's um, there are you know in mba you develop a lot of skills which are which will cover in a little bit which 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 are high impact um and this goes beyond the technical skills um now we'll go into a little bit of details as to various skills and what not um but before we do that um you know this is a very famous proverb right you know chain is only as strong as its weakest link but in in the context of personal career and personal development um you know one has to think in terms of uh, the skills and generally speaking the the altitude of your growth in a career is going to be determined by the weakest skill that you have um this is a bit contra to contrarian to what generally you would hear um people say you know focus on your strengths you know your strength is going to decide how far you go in life what not but at each stage that's true right your strengths will allow you to plan for a career achieve a, you know get into a job grow in that job your strengths will help you there but once you reach a certain competitive level in in wherever you are in which your level of career which your organization which your industry there are going to be few other people around you with similar competencies with similarly strong skills then what happens is your bosses or your organization is going to start looking for what is not good in a particular individual what is not working for us in you know what which part of that individual skills is really not working for us and that's where you know things become a bit challenging and that's why i always um, suggest to youngsters is that while you're focusing on 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 your strength don't lose sight of some of your weaknesses uh, sometimes you may not even know that this, there are some certain things that are weaknesses so from time to time you have to assess um, depending on the circumstances you are in uh, whether there are any weak links in your skill set and you have to focus on improving those and um, and <clears throat> there is a big there is a saying that you're just one weakness away from doubling your income um, there is some research to prove that that in the western societies um, but as statement is very strong if you uh, are focusing from time to time on your weakness and uh, making it making it strong making it your strong point then you will see premium uh, premium results in your career be it in terms of the opportunities you get or be it in terms of <coughs> uh, in terms of the growth you see in your careers um just going back to that comedian clip you know i'm a chartered accountant uh, so there was a comment there that if you're good in math and if you have an ocd then you become an accountant right um ocd is obsessive compulsive disorder which means that you want everything to be right you want everything to be precise you want everything to be in like a straight line a box right uh, that's ocd and and people have um, there are many people who have ocds of different kind um you know i have an ocd which you know when i lock the door and leave the home i tend to check twice 
uh, when I lock my car, I tend I tend to click my you know car button twice. You know, it's it's the lighter side of life, but that's an OCD. You know, that my wife keeps calling me out on it, but yeah, but but you know, um, accountants are typically known for that, and um, they you know when I first started a CA career, I was told that by people who are outside the accounting life uh, that you know you you can only identify problems you guys cannot solve any problems that's what the comedian clip also said that accountants can't solve problems they, they are only good at pointing out problems and that kind of hit me very hard because as a business professional or as any professional you don't want to be sitting and just showing the problems right you want to be in a place you want to have the skills to be able to not just identify the problem but also solve the problem. And that's when I decided that, you know, I'm not going to be just stuck as an accountant. I don't want to be st stuck as an accountant. And then I decided that I, you know, I want to be um, in the toughest place that's possible for accounts and finance uh, in the world, which is Wall Street, and then figured out a way to get there and, and get into investment banking. And then obviously the, the whole personality change, the whole outlook change as to how you think about it, uh, how you you know approach life, how you approach careers, how you think about problems, how you solve the problems. Um, so, you know, um, things like that. So if, if, if something, you know, in that, in that scenario, when early part of my career, I'm glad people commented like that, saying that your accountants, you're going to be in one of those accountants who's only going to identify the problems. Um, so, you know, that hit me, that resonated with me. So I did something about it. So each one of you are going to hear different things in your, um, careers and if, and you will respond differently. If two people are like, getting the same comment, both of you will respond differently. So you have to see how you're going to utilize those, those things. And you, in this case, you know, having an OCD or identifying problem was the weakness somebody pointed out for an accountant. So I did something about it and then built a career where I'm able to solve problems. Uh, Ma'am, if you don't mind going to the next. So from now on, it will be a bit more, you know, lectury in terms of, you know, just going through the, the theory of theory of things. Um, so, you know, it's what I wanted to highlight was skills are different categories. 20 years ago, mostly it was technical skills. Um, then, you know, last 10, 12 years, people have started to realize the importance of soft skills, um, especially in India. And I was, I'm fortunate for last 20 years to be spending a lot of time in the US as well as India. So I've seen, you know, both sides grow in the last 20 years or both, both countries evolve. Um, soft skills was a big deal in, in the US even 20, 30 years ago but it's becoming more and more important skills now. Um, personal branding was not a concept even five years ago in India as, as a mainstream concept. Um, it was considered to be like, okay, some salespeople have to do that, some marketing people have to do that. Um, but personal branding uh, started in, even in the US, um, believe it or not, it started only after the launch of uh, LinkedIn and after the launch of Facebook uh, and I was fortunately there, right in the in the beginning of those, you know, those uh, digital media in New York City. And I remember people discussing within my colleagues in Deloitte and Barclays. Hey, you know, there's something called LinkedIn. Have you opened a profile? And uh, colleagues telling me, you know, discussing, saying that no, no, no. If we open our profile in LinkedIn, HR will think that we are looking for jobs and they might fire us. These are distinctive conversations that I've heard. You know, we have discussed among our colleagues back in 2003, 2004, even after two years of launch, launch of LinkedIn. But today, if you don't have a profile in LinkedIn, then you have, you're almost in trouble with your career, right? Um, you know, everybody expects you to have a profile. Uh, so the personal branding has become a separate skill in by itself now, a separate skill category. And there are a few other contributors to your career um, which we'll cover in a little bit. If you don't mind going to the next slide now. Um, how are we doing with time? Uh, I'll rush through some of this, but yeah. 
So I'm sorry, there's a repetition here, financial acumen. Um, so clearly I'm not as OCD anymore as, 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 as a typical accountant. Um, so I'm missing some things. Um, the whole thing got copied twice. This, okay, my, uh, my bad here. Um, so, you know, some of the technical skills um, in the finance and business uh, in, in the domains um, is clearly your ability to, uh, you know, your ability with math, your ability with quantitative uh, analytics. Um, and today you cannot escape the, the fact that there is technology in everything that you do. Um, to give you a background, you know, I, from my experience, when I joined um, the banking job in New York City, coming from the accounting career to banking side, I used to use a mouse um, to use, you know, while working on Excel. And uh, somebody told me that, you know, I, you know, use, only losers use a mouse in, in Wall Street jobs. What they meant is that you, you should be able to handle two, three screens at a time two, three monitors at a time, only keyboard and not using a mouse. I couldn't appreciate when I first heard that, you know, back in 2003. But as I spent more time in that particular banking career, within a few weeks, I realized if you become good at using the keyboard, how effective you can become, how fast you can become. And it's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, you know, try it sometimes, you know, with its first few weeks is going to be so tough if you are so dependent on mouse. But once you develop the skills of just using the keyboard for everything that you need in a computer, then life is such a, you know, it's like you're on a six lane highway rather than on a, on a two lane uh, crowded road. Um, that's how much uh, you fast you can become. And that's that people appreciate that a lot. So that is just a very basic example of, you know, your, uh, the need to become comfortable with technology. And with AI, ML, data sciences, data visualization, these have become like a fundamental necessity for, you know, uh, for a career, successful career in finance and, and in, in business. Um, and depending on what kind of organizations you join, the degree of appreciation that people would have uh, if you bring all these skill sets, um, will be different. But believe me, the higher or the more successful, the larger the organizations, the more Western exposure the organizations have, um, the greater the degree of appreciation people will have with how comfortable you're, you're in technology, even within the finance jobs, even within the business jobs. Um, don't be under the illusion that, oh, I'm in finance career, I don't need to learn much of technology. Data visualization today sometimes requires skills in Python. So learning Python code, many of the MBA programs uh, in the West as well as some in India have started teaching Python coding for MBA students. Doesn't matter what domain they want to go, to, uh, they come from or what domain they want to go to. HR, even HR has you know a lot of data, uh, data and analysis requirements in large organizations. So learning basic Python to deal with large data has become a necessity. Oh, Ma'am, if you don't mind going to the next one. Um, soft skills, you know, there are many, many soft skills here, uh, but I would like to touch upon the one that is at the bottom, um, which is expectations management. And if you don't mind scrolling down a little bit, expectations management. What I mean by that is, and I, um, you know, um, in India, compared, um, this is cross generalization. Don't uh, get me wrong here. I don't have any uh, negative sentiments about India. This is my country, my culture. Um, but I'm just saying, when I compare that with Western pe Western people, Indians generally hesitate to say no. Indians generally hesitate to, you know, respond. Um, you know, um, we we feel that. Um, you know, staying quiet is better. Um, and what happens with that in successful or, or complicated careers or, comp, you know, highly competitive careers is that you fall short of managing the expectations that you're setting for the other people. Um, expect, managing expectations of your stakeholders 
is one of the most neglected skill um especially in india is my personal observation many people may not agree with that but that's my personal observation and uh, americans on the other extreme do a very good job of it they even mislead you in how they manage your expectations of them right so some of them even mislead you we indians even if we have certain advantages that we can offer we tend to be shy because we are told that you know don't show off you know as, as a as a kid or as an, when you're growing up in a culture and that's just the nature of our culture um but what i have observed is in a corporate career yes you should be very very humble but you should not be shy if the situation needs you to communicate if the situation needs you to express what you can offer um and how you can do it by when you can do it setting the expectations with deadlines setting the expectations with the quality of work that can come out within a given time frame uh, is very very important um both first at your own level personal level then setting the expectations with your manager and then setting the expectations with your client or whoever is dependent on it so these are the things you know that fall under expectations management and i would highly encourage um those who have don't have much exposure to this concept you know to spend some more time googling stuff on this or watching some videos or reading some books on expectation management and if there is one thing that i would like to really um you know have you take home with you after this presentation is is this concept of expectations management maybe if you don't mind going to the next one online presence personal brand we talked a little bit about it um so this is really really important in today today's day and age and uh, like i said um even even now i suffer from inhibitions as to you know building a online presence you know building a, a, a writing a blog um or you know posting an article on linkedin if you go to my linkedin profile you will not see you know many many articles that i have you know written or i have shared um but people know when they meet me in person when my clients in in the us and in india they know that i have good knowledge i have good concepts but it's just that it's not my habit and i have not come over I, you know i have not been able to um overcome that um so this is an example of where you know i'm still working on that weakness um so the, you know you, you all of you as youngsters you, ha- you you should make it your second nature uh, but at the same time i would also warn that be very clear in what you're sharing you know personal stuff versus business stuff right um a personal stuff it's almost reached a level of security concerns now in the world and um, the more digital print digital footprint you leave about your personal photos personal stuff online in in digital platforms the higher the risk that that you carry with especially with the growth in ai technology um and don't think just in terms of what impact it could have on you now think about a situation where 10 years down the line you become a very very important person you are a successful business professional in a corporate or you are or even if you are a successful um, you know politician or you are successful whatever right um, your data now can come back to work against you in the future somebody could misuse that because once you become successful once you become important person um, they can use it against you for various purposes so personal stuff you know is something that stay away from on the digital side but business side um you know start building your brand online start building your footprint online next one ma'am very quickly i'll skip the next one and actually go to the last one given the time here um these are you know some of the uh, regular stuff um, domain expertise lifelong learning you would have heard of all this language skills is another uh, you know quite a, you know quite a discounted skills people have but it's a, you know you know that if you know more languages you get more comfortable interacting with more people travel around the country travel around the world so focus on that and networking of course is one of the most underappreciated concept and one thing i'll leave you with is don't think of uh, networking um, and guilt in the same sentence you know networking is not something to be guilty about you should networking and pr- pride is is what goes together 
right have uh, have uh, if you are a successful network professional then um you will um do well and networking doesn't mean that you're meeting people just for gaining advantage networking is getting to know people establishing your you know network of people you know and sometimes they might need your help in the future or you might need their help and there's nothing wrong about it that is the basic human nature helping each other right and think of it from that broad sense uh, it's not quid pro quo relationship of you know what what goes into networking networking is getting to know people knowing what sometimes knowing what the needs are if you are able to help them help them sometimes when you need help you can reach out to the people and with that i'll go to the concept of you know mentoring um all of these people all of the famous pro- personalities that you see there had one thing in common they are all different fields um you know the one thing that they had in common is they were handheld they were guided by mentors in their life uh if you don't mind going to the next slide ma'am um it's hard to imagine that mahatma gandhi himself had a mentor uh you know bill gates is famously known to take lot of guidance from the from warren buffett you know who was who is among the top 3 4 richest people in the world with bill gates himself but bill gates takes lot of guidance from warren buffett you know mahatma gandhi took lot of guidance from uh, gopal krishna gokhale and Ma- Ma- nelson mandela took lot of guidance from mahatma gandhi you know they were mentors um, you know their mentors played a lot of important role and that's something which is completely neglected in india um, i know this very well in india mentoring concept is just talked about in theory but practically the students are not still realizing or working professionals are still not realizing the impact that mentors can have in your life and from time to time in your career mentors should change because a mentor who is successfully giving me guidance now may not be in a good position to give me guidance 10 years from today the people who guided me you know in pwc in chennai in 1998 to 2000 they are not in a good position today to guide me because of the experience that i have had today i will i will have to look for a different set of mentors you know who can relate to where i am professionally and what i am aspiring to do professionally in the next few years so that is a continuous process of identifying mentors and believe me it's not going to happen automatically you have to continuously keep hunting in your life for good mentors who can be effective and who will have no expectations to anything from you they accept for seeing your success those kind of mentors are rare to find and if you in case you come across such individual cherish them like god that's my personal advice that would be it ma'am um may- maybe i'll leave this final thought um as a caution um i you know this is something that a wise man told me that we all reach a satisfactory level of underperformance in our lives what it means is you know we work very hard we do a lot of we achieve a lot of things but at a certain point in our life um if everyone is satisfied with what we are doing that's where we stop you know uh, that is an performance um you know you can grow more you can achieve more but you have to be conscious about it if you're not conscious you're not deliberate like you're thinking early part of your career how ambitiously you're thinking how open mindedly you're thinking that i have to do this i have to do that 10 years from today 15 years from today 30 years from today you still have to continuously think about it like that otherwise you will reach, reach a satisfactory level of underperformance uh, that that's another one take away that i would like you to think about and take take home i'm open to questions now hopefully that was um, you know useful and at least some of you gain something out of it <clears throat> the session really ended on a great final thought uh, shrikant and that's very very practical in today's contemporary business situations 
So Thank I'll you. just uh, look through the chat box and uh, see if there are any questions. In fact, I also have a couple of one, but uh, let me give, uh, let me see if participants have any priorities and I'll look through that. And before I'm uh, going through participants' question, uh, one thing which I definitely would like to ask you, Shrikant, is, see, uh, what we understand is every role today is going to be rewritten in the form and in the context of AI, uh, right from engineers to sales to marketeers and even finance professionals for that matter. Everyone is going to leverage AI and data. So any particular certifications, additional certifications to their PGDM or MBA program that you would like to suggest so that they um, can you know, survive well within this technological, digital and data driven environments? Um, I, I apologize. I do not know of any uh, certification programs on uh, top of my mind. But if you, you know, go to Udemy or if you go to Khan Academy, um, all of them um, have uh, some courses on AI, ML, and uh, you know Python for data uh, for data sciences. Uh, these are you know courses that by default every one of you should be doing. If you're in finance business world, you should automatically be doing those uh, in those courses. Those certifications, some of them are free, um, mm -hmm. and you know if not the intermediate level, at least the basic level courses. Just do it, you know, in the weekends. Just do it across, you know, the free time that you have. Um, and believe me, all this will become like a necessity. Like I gave you an example of LinkedIn. Today, LinkedIn is a default for a business professional. 2003, 2004, people were debating whether they should open a profile, right? Um, and uh, time is, you know, technology is developing so fast that AIML is not, if it is going to have an impact on your career, it is just a question of when it is going to have an impact. And that when is not in terms of a decade, that when is in terms of literally a, 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 you know, a year, two years, three years, not more than that. Um, you are going to have an impact. So better off you know, doing those certifications and yeah. be prepared. Right. So while there was a very good emphasis on human skills and soft skills in our today's interaction, so here I can see one question uh, from uh, Mr. Rishi Raman. So what he wants to know is how to get over of that temporary low mindset, which generally, I guess, uh, students... Many of, us, many of us go through. Correct. Um, that is inevitable. Uh, that is inevitable. That is just how the body performs, right? You know, the body is a set of chemical functions. And, you know, because of circumstances, your body may react differently and some days you may feel low. Mm -hmm. um, but what typically helps um, is, is, is having a goal, right? Is having, having some sense of direction as to what you want to do, what you want to achieve. Um, you know, think of a sports professional, right? Whenever a sports professional loses a certain match, uh, or, you know, loses certain competition, they are, of course, feeling low. They may not show it, but they go back and practice more of the skill set they which was used to defeat them. Um, you know, and they practice more so that the next time they face the competition, they are not, uh, people are not exploiting that uh, skill set. So in the corporate context, in the you know, working life context, I would say that, you know, having some kind of goal um, having some kind of an ambition to achieve uh, whatever that is you want to achieve. That is very important. And once you achieve that, many times I'm, I have done this mistake in the past. Once you achieve a certain goal, we feel that that's the end of it. You know, I, I go, got into Wall Street job. Okay, I have achieved whatever I wanted to achieve. But it's very important that immediately you set the next goal. Otherwise, you will end up in a situation where you will feel low you will feel disconnected, uh, you will feel tired. So continuously having some goals, resetting the goals can help you come over the, uh, the low side. So uh, looking at the cognizance of time, I'll just take up one more last question. So uh, this is from Mr. Nikhil. He just wants to know how can finance be a sustainable career? 
It, uh, it depends on what context you're asking that question. Uh, I'm not very clear uh, as to what the thought process was behind that question. So uh, probably assuming that, you know, starting a career in finance and how to evolve and grow in the career okay. of finance yeah. to make it sustainable. I mean, that's what my assumption yeah. is. But Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously finance, um, you know, you, it has so many opportunities, right? You know, you can think of a job in, in a bank, you can think of a corporate finance role, you can think of a job in in, in educational institute where there's a need for finance departments. Um, so there are various uh, domains or industries where, you know, finance skills are, are useful. Depending on the context, um, you know, if you're thinking of a career in, uh, you know, equity investments as an investment professional, right? And then, you know, to keep it sustainable, what would definitely be necessary is, you know, constantly upgrading your uh, technical knowledge um, in, in investments. Uh, reading a lot of relevant books becomes... It should be a second habit. It's not even like an option um, when you are in that kind of a competitive uh, environment of an equity investment professional or or even investment banker. Um, you are forced to um, you're forced to constantly upgrade your skills. You're forced to constantly be uh, in the know of what's going on in the world um, because in finance. Uh, you might uh, the world is like a small place now, right? Anything that happens in in China, Taiwan, in you know Russia, Ukraine can have an immediate impact on on some of the financial stuff you're dealing with in your company, be it a bank or be it a you know corporate finance of a of a manufacturing company in a pharma industry uh, or any industry. Uh, it could have impact on your interest rates. It could have in, impact on the ability to borrow money, uh, take loans. Um, so in the finance career, generally speaking, you're expected to be um, you know, well aware of what's going on in the world, well aware of what's going on in your own economy, be it in India or be it anywhere in the world. Um, so those have immediate impact on, on your career, more so than, you know, some other professions. So keeping the cognizance of time, uh, uh, that was the last question for the day. Uh, any more questions? I guess, uh, Shrikant, you have shared your mail ID also on the last slide. So participants yes, can reach out to you. Sure thing, ma'am. Yeah, so, um, es essentially, it's hello at uh, alphaxen.com. H-E-L-L-O at A-L-P-H-A-X-N.com is the email ID where you can reach out to me. So thank you, Mr. Srikant, for sharing your experience and advice to inspire the young leaders of tomorrow. We definitely, we all stand enriched with your profound insights. Thank My you. My sincere thanks to Mr. Sudhir Sharma, Honorable President of AIMS, Dr. Durga Prasad, Executive Secretary, all the board members, AIMS Secretariat, and session facilitators for creating and organizing such inspiring and knowledge sharing opportunities. Thanks to all the attendees on Zoom as well as AIM's YouTube channel where this session was streamed live for your presence and participation. AIM's fraternity wishes you all to embark on a meaningful and sustainable professional journey in the years to come. Good luck to all of you and thank you so very much. Thank you, everyone.